Coach Bob with you today, and today we are going to be discussing the Riker Rally. You know, the question that I am asking myself <laughs> is why is it called a rally? Is it really a rally or is it just called one? So what is a rally anyway? So rally racing isn't really off-road racing, it's more dirt road racing. Um, it's back roads and through deserts on a double track and that sort of thing. Now, when you get into some of the uh, some of the deep uh, motorcycle rallies and the real big buggy rallies that go through rocks and that sort of terrain, that's a different kind of adventure race. But the traditional rally racing, you've seen it, the cars, the fast cars, fishtailing down dirt roads and that sort of thing. Well, that is the lineage of this machine. That is what we're looking to see, is is this really a rally machine? I believe it is. In fact, I'm gonna tell you more than that. I actually shot this video twice already today. <laughs> yes, this is the third time I've gone out. Uh, camera malfunction after camera malfunction after camera malfunction. It is so hot, uh, the cameras are just, they're just blistering up, man. Battery swelling up, I mean, it's been, it's been a long day, but I, you know, I mean, what can I, com I can't really complain. I'm going out riding again. So, you know, there's that. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about the Riker itself. So the Riker, you know, is the three-wheeled sporty riding machine from Can-Am. And this is the Rally Edition, which is their top of the line. The Rally Edition costs 2,000 more than their Rally 900. So what we have to do is our goal today is to determine whether that $2,000 is money well spent. With the accoutrements that it comes with and the performance that it delivers, is it worth the extra 20 Benjamins? You are going to find out real soon. So the next time you see me, we're going to be on a dirt road and we're going to be killing it and we're going to figure out exactly what this fine little machine offers. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to put it in rally mode. There's a button right here. It might be hard for you to see. It's at the very bottom. If I hold it down, you can see I just put it in rally mode. That turns off all of the VSS stabilization. The next thing I'm going to do, uh, I've done this a few times in different settings. And what I've found for my weight and for my the performance that I'm looking for, I am putting it on level four. Uh, for the suspension, it will stiffen the suspension up quite a bit, which for me off-road, it provides me a little, little greater clearance uh, of the road. And it works really, really well. Alright, so we're dialed in. I also want you to take note of where my foot pegs are. I've got them moved back. Um, that's so that my legs are more at a 90 degree angle. So when I'm sitting, they're going to be more like this. I also have the handlebars brought back so that I can keep my elbows out. Not that I always do, but I'm supposed to, and so are you if you didn't know that. All right. Now, I've done this in just on the regular sporty type mode, and the electronic nannies kick in pretty quick when you go to do these sorts of things. Whereas the rally mode, as you can see, that was a big old squirrel. <laughs> Think about big as a possum. Looked like he's going to chase me. <laughs> All right, so the rally, will it rally? What makes it a rally? Well, first, let's talk a little bit about that. And I'm going to, there are a lot of things that, that do make it a rally. I'm going to slow down. There's a lot of gravel here. And what I don't want to do is, uh, I don't want to damage the, the motorcycle. It would definitely handle this, uh, this gravel. But when you start spinning a lot of these big gravel rocks up, you can damage paint and scrape things up. And this isn't mine. Now, if this was mine, I'm not going to lie to you, I'd come blasting through here at 70 miles an hour without hesitation. Um, but this motorcycle is not mine, and I, I certainly don't want to, you know, abuse it. All right. Okay, we're clear. So here we go. So you can see what it'll do there. Um, will it rally? It will rally, as a matter of fact. So the suspension on this thing is amazing. Um, I can tell you that, that when I have it on this firm setting, this thing feels unbelievable. It just absolutely 
the compression and rebound is spot on for my weight on this road. And I rode it on uh, all the settings earlier, messing around with it. It's firm, but it's controllable. So if I was going to do a quick, quick little turn, let's see. I'll just, I'll just kind of whip one out here. There we go. Yeah, nice. But she'll rally, baby. She will rally. Um, so the suspension KYB, and I believe it's HBG, HGB. Uh, it's the um, it's the reservoir on there that you can adjust on the shock, um, and that's where you get your stiffening. It's actually a dampening compression, which deals more with uh, with preload and compression and less with rebound. But it does impact your rebound. I've determined that uh, just by feel. Um, but the suspension is magnificent on this. Also, want to want you to know that the back tire has a larger sidewall, which gives you a lot more room for that tire to compress. There's no need to air down. It's not like that. But understanding that the tire is, it has a larger sidewall because the rim is one inch smaller. And so you can have that same geometry of the traditional Riker, but have more sidewall. Um, the ground clearance is perfect. Um, the ground clearance, the lowest point that I could measure was 6.5 inches. That was when I was off of the motorcycle on compression four. It lowers less than an inch. You see the deer going across the road? That's why I ain't doing 80 out here, y'all, if you ever wondered. <laughs> and this is in the middle of the day. Uh, I saw several this morning. I saw a couple of snakes too, but you don't get to see all that because my footage all died. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to put a camera on the ground. I want you to get an external view of what I'm experiencing and not just from the handlebar and from the helmet. But you can see, man, it's smooth, it's flat, it's eating up the bumps. This has got some washboard areas. You can soften it up if you wanted it softer. There again, when I'm coming around blind turns, I'm careful because there could be a deer come flying out in front of me. You see the, did you see the back drift right there in that sand? That is wonderful, that is just beautiful. What a great feeling. Um, there's a lot of sand, deep sand on this road. This is that sugar sand that people talk about on motorcycles that'll put you on your butt. I cannot go this fast on this road on my Tiger without, you know, clutching the pearls, so to speak. <laughs> can I say that? I don't think I can say that. Deep sand, deep, deep, deep sand over there. Flick of the hip, elbows out, and you could fishtail this baby for days, man, loving every minute of it. Now, I know what you're saying. You're saying, do you have to fishtail it? No, you do not. However, if you're on a dirt road and you're really dropping the hammer, you need to understand what it's going to do and how it's going to feel when that back end comes loose because you don't want it to break loose when you're not expecting it and then not know how to respond to it we're just going to drop a camera right here i think this is a good spot they were doing some dirt work here earlier when i was in here looks like they're done with that but um yeah let's let's uh i want to get somewhere where there's not a lot of a lot of big old tractor you know pat uh paths going in and because I don't want somebody running over my camera. We're going to drop a camera right here. This looks very low traveled. Uh, looks like they just turned a couple of backhoes around here. And that's not a problem. I've got a clear view in both directions. So we'll set a camera on the ground. It's going to be, you know, it's not going to be a close-up view, obviously. Um, like I said, again, hopefully a tractor don't come over and run over my camera. But if it does, I guess uh, it gives me a reason to buy a new camera. All right, she's running, so we're running. So let's see where we are, let's see what we got. We'll sling a little bit up on the camera. Look at that right there. Yeah. Trying to keep an eye on my camera so I don't run over it. <laughs> but you can see that you can swing, bring that back in right on around. So here's my camera right up here. Make sure I didn't knock it over. I did not. Let's see what we got. 
so you got an idea now of just watching it and again so here we go let's see what we got here nice <laughs> thought I knocked her over that time I did yeah the old camera covered in dirt what do you think of that we'll get a couple more passes see that mud slinging off of that front tire up there y'all I mean that front tire was covered in mud Let's grab the boy here. So will the rally rally? <laughs> yes, it will. Look at this. <laughs> Woo! Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Fun. So the rally, the features and all that, we're going to do that here in a minute, but let's get to the end of this road. Oh, so, you know, just doing the straight rally racing, right? You can haul, man. And then if you had a sharp turn here, you can get on that brake. You can drift that back in around come on back yeah so you can be moving along pretty good and then if you had to break it hard you kind of lock that back in up there you go man this is a more fun than you can possibly imagine slow down we should have our gravel coming up here we came in. Big old piece of wood in the road. Gravel trap right there as I call it. We'll lock it up. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Love it. You know, this thing handles superlatively. If you're a rider, you know, if you're a rider, you can make this thing talk. You really can. And I'm not even saying that I'm a rider, but if you are, you, you can make it talk. Now, if I keep this thing stiffened up for the road, I can do some crazy turns, too, with some tremendous amounts of speed. We're not going to do all that today. We'll do that later. We're going to talk about the handling, the on-road handling later. But, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to set my parking brake, and I'm going to put it back on my nice plush ride, which is number two for me. So I'm going to back it off. There's three. There's two. Come over here. There's three, there's two, and come over here, there's three, and there is two. All right, and we're going to come out of rally mode because we're going to be on the road. There we go, we're out of rally mode. Take the parking brake off, make sure we don't pull out in front of the car. And here we go, just like that. Now, I can tell you, I can feel a dramatic difference between a four setting and a two setting. And I've done some handling tests on this um, that have been really very impressive. I can't wait to share, you, uh, share with you the, the steering and cornering techniques that I've been working on. Are there people that ride better than me? There are. Um, but I am a rider. I'm a guy with a lot of experience. And 
I look forward to sharing what little bit of information that I have and I think that it's going to benefit you a lot. So make sure you give the video a big old fat thumbs up, share it with your friends, all that stuff. I would appreciate it. All right, well, we're going to ride this road here. The next time you see me, we're going to be entering a park. There's a chicken. <laughs> All right, well, welcome to the park. I know what you're saying, Coach, that ain't the park, that's the woods. <laughs> well, this is what a park looks like where I'm from. All right, we're just going to pop right in here. Looks like I might have been here twice today if you see uh, some burnout marks right there. All right, we'll set the parking brake, and we'll hit the kill switch. And that is all there is to turning the Riker off. I'm going to toss my gloves over there in the grass, and let's do a little walk around. Now, I had notes earlier, but I don't, I'm don't. i not so sure that I need them now. <laughs> In fact, I can tell you I don't. So let's talk about, I'm going to lift my shield here. Hopefully the audio will still be fine. It is just so daggum hot out here, it's unbelievable. So let's start at the top and work our way down. So the Riker Rally, the first thing you get is you get these hand guards. Now, these hand guards, are they you know, like bark busters. They're not bark busters. And for those who have live in the adventure world on motorcycles, they're not like the bark buster. They're not as heavy duty as the bark buster, but they don't have to be. Anyone who rides an adventure bike knows that you drop it more than you put gas in it. It has to have more protection so you don't break a clutch lever or a brake lever. These are simply there to deflect rocks and deflect limbs and that sort of thing when you're riding. Also in the winter time, I'm sure it does a good job of kind of uh, breaking the wind, no pun intended, to keep those hands a little more warm. So that's the first difference that you get. The next thing, working our way down, you got a pre-filter that, that, that keeps all that dust out of your air filter which you can see this machine is absolutely covered in dust from me riding it like I have today so we know that that pre-filter is desperately needed next thing let's talk LED light the LED light is magnificent uh, this thing in the dark on these dark country roads you can see I'm out in the middle of nowhere I ride these roads very often I've been riding them in the evening putting this thing through its paces and I cannot outrun the headlights it does very 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 good very pleased with that um, it has what I'm gonna call they're, they're, they're gonna call it either a crash guard or or a uh, a radiator guard I'm gonna call it a brush guard and the reason I'm calling it that that's what I think it really serves the purpose as this is not going to be something you're gonna run into a tree and it not be a problem you're not gonna hit you know a log and it not be a problem it's simply designed to protect it from things that small debris that fly up things that will keep you from ramming something through the front of this machine and you don't want your Riker damaged it's it's not it's heavy enough it's heavy enough for what you're doing it's a lot like the hand guards they're heavy enough for what it is you also have a little protection here for your a arms and you have a heavier duty rim on it that heavy duty rim uh, keeps you from bending a rim uh, the front tires are the same size as on the traditional Riker the back tire the back tire again I think I mentioned this earlier this back rim is an inch smaller which gives you more sidewall and that more sidewall it, it basically protects things for you and keeps you from slamming that back rim into something it also has the acropific exhaust which here in the south we just call it an acro because you know if it's longer than three syllables, we just don't say it. That's just that's just the unspoken word down here. Um, the adjustable suspension, that is an amazing thing. I'm going to tell you right now, on this machine, there are features that come, as we've talked about, but the features to me that really separate this thing, that really makes this Riker rally ready, is the suspension. You have your KYB shocks, you have compression preload, you have dampening in your uh, in your reservoir, and you have all of that available also in the back here. And then the other thing is to be able to put it into rally mode. When I ride this, and I've ridden it not in rally mode on a dirt road, when you go to spin that back tire, it doesn't chop the throttle, but it backs that throttle off, therefore making things a little less volatile. I want them volatile on the, on the dirt. I want to be able to feel it in my hands and in my legs, in my bones. 
The ground clearance, I look for the lowest part on this machine to get the ground clearance. Now, I'm not counting this because when this goes up, when you get compression, right, and it lifts this wheel up, this goes with the wheel. So that's not indicative of overall ground clearance. If you're that deep in sand and mud, I'm going to tell you with these tires, you're going to get stuck. You are. Even though the tires are more aggressive here than they are on the regular Riker, you're still going to get stuck. It's not designed for that. This is a rally machine, not a bogging machine. So the lowest point that I could find was right here, and that was 6.5 inches off the ground. When I sat on it, um, on two, on the setting of the dampening, the machine compressed just under an inch, and on four, it compressed only a half of an inch, which means that I'm six inches above the ground. Now, as the machine is doing this, the only time you have to worry about what we would call a high center is when this is in a trough, that is in a trough, and that right there rubs. Six and a half inches is plenty for what this is designed to do. It is designed to be a rally machine. It is a Riker rally. It really lives up to the name rally. It is not a bogger. It's not a four-wheeler. It's not a mudder. It's a rally, and it does that exceptionally well. So if you were to ask me, is this worth the extra $2,000? Yes, it's probably, in all honesty, worth $3,000. I don't want to give BRP the big head, but look. The electronics and the suspension alone, if you go to upgrade all that, you're looking at a lot of money. This stuff ain't cheap. Also, you have a nice, nice seat. And I can't remember, this is the uh, quick link, I think they call it. I'll drop the title of it. Everything on this thing has functioned perfectly for me. So what we're going to do, we're going to crank this up. There's your features. Now, we didn't talk horsepower. We didn't talk torque. We didn't talk all that. Let's get this camera going. So let's get this baby fired up. So this park, as you can see, is, is a wooded park. And what you're going to see as we come out of here, spin a little bit. I'm not going to go between these two trees, although I could probably, you know what, let's just go on between them. <laughs> My spatial orientation is improving with the Riker, I mean. So just coming across here, you can see you have a lot of change of, uh, of terrain up and down. Um, there's a washout right over here we're going to hit real quick. We'll drift on around to it. I know it's over here somewhere. I just have to find it. This is the rocks right here. There's some rocks right here. Didn't high center over the rocks. A nice little rooty root section, right? We'll swing back through here. You can see you got a nice root climb right here. It goes right up, no problem. So you can see that these things that we are doing you would never, ever imagine doing on your spider. Ever. Not in a million years. And again, really off-roading is not what it's designed for. But the reason for me to show you that is not to say, hey, take it off-roading. I'll stand up here. We've got some nice roots and rocks and stuff right here. There's a nice little center trench. You can't hardly see it with the cameras, I know. We'll, uh, we'll drift it right around this little turn. And there we are, just like that. Yeah. So it will handle rough terrain. It will. Would I want to be doing 60 miles an hour through that? Not on anything. You can bet that on your life. Ooh, that breeze feels good. <laughs> So the 900 rally, is it worth the extra buck to you? It may not be. If, if you're just going to ride on the road, if you're not going to do anything radical, the 900, the, the, the traditional 900 is all you need. But for my liking, if I buy one, it'll be the rally. Unless Coach Vic says, hey, it's just too tall for me to get on. And that's a possibility, then I would have to just go with the 900. But as far as what I would want if I were just going to ride and it be mine, 
and only mine, it's a no-brainer for me. I would have nothing but the rally. And it has nothing to do with bragging and saying it's the best or the most expensive or anything like that. The suspension and the rally mode make alone make that worth it. Also, I don't think I mentioned it has a skid plate on the bottom as well. So there's that too. The skid plate, you know, when you start adding all of this up, brush guard, skid plate, protection for your A-arms, um, adjustable suspension, pre-filters, uh, hand guards, uh, nice seat, uh, better wheel package, better tire package. When you start adding all that up, I'm sounding like an infomercial, aren't I? I don't mean to. I'm just being honest with you. So let's talk about, does Coach Bob see anything that he would like to be done differently? I'll tell you, there are. There are two things that I would love to be see done differently. I don't believe that they're doable, honestly. Um, I think I'm asking for too much. <laughs> In fact, I know I am. But as a rally machine, as a rally, if you were going to really get radical on this thing, I mean super radical, what you would want is a handbrake that control just your two front wheels, and then you would want your foot brake that would control your back wheel. If you had that, the braking, and you would want to bypass your ABS. So that would be my braking change on it. Again, I don't think that, I think the ABS is easy enough. You could bypass your ABS, they could do that electronically. But, you know, can they, could they graduate and put more braking on the back for off-road? That'd be kind of nice. Uh, do away with your ABS and, and uh, maybe put a little more uh, focus on the rear wheel as opposed to the front wheels off-road. Might be a nice touch. Certainly for when you want to make that turn, because what I would want to do is lock the back tire up, not the front, and swing it around, you know. Um, the other thing, the only other thing, is the brake pedal. The brake pedal is in the perfect position for virtually everyone. When you have your foot pegs pushed further out, the brake pedal is in the absolutely impeccably perfect position. But when you have it brought in, when your knees are at that, this 90 degree, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Turn on this road, there's no traffic on this road, we go in front of this guy. Plenty of room. All right. So we're just gonna stop here real quick. I'll show you what I'm talking about. When I ride off-road, again, I want, my, I want my legs 90 degrees. I want my elbows to be able to get out safely, so I have the handlebars brought back a notch. I have the foot pegs brought all the way to about four fingers from the back. Now you see how this, is, this pedal here is, is tilted upward. I would like it more flat so that I don't have to flex my ankle when I'm riding. So when I'm like this, I have to lift that toe because I'm going to cover my brake pedal. I have to cover my brake pedal all the time. So I have that toe up. You can see I always want to grab a clutch and a brake. Um, but I always have that toe up in preparation of that. All right, here we go. That fella in the Jeep was really nice. He pulled up slow and said, hey, wave us on out. So I figured I'd go ahead and go. He thought we were on the, thought I was on the side of the road having a problem. Everybody out here is so nice, man. This is a great little area. You see a lot of Jeeps. You see a lot of four-wheelers out here. Um, this is that part of the world, man. People like to get outside and play, even when it's a gazillion degrees. All right, so I'm gonna give it two grading scales. The first is a scale of one to 10. Now I could go through each section and go this, 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 that, that, that. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give an overall grade. I'm gonna give it a 9.5. Now that is very, very high. I've never ridden a 10. In fact, I've never really ridden anything higher than a 9.5. So while the 9.5, I'd like to have the brake positioned a little bit better, and I'd like to have more brake flexibility, and I'd like to be able to bypass the ABS. That's why the 9.5. Now, on a scale on the, on the one to five star thing, though, let's talk about that. I'm going to give it five stars for rallying. Um, it's a five star rally machine. I mean, it, it is not just a title. It's just, this, this Riker is not just another pretty face. And I was afraid when I got it, that's what it was gonna be. 
And as I talked with Coach Vick, I said, you know, if it's not rally ready, I'm going to have to tell people it's just called a rally. It's not a rally. But it's really a rally. It's really a rally, rally, really, really rally ready. <laughs> All right. So now you know. You can buy one with confidence knowing what it delivers and knowing what it is and what it is not. It is a rally machine. So the BRP Riker Rally, two thumbs up from Coach Bob. There you go. All right. Well, there you have it, another one in the books. So do me a favor, you, yes you, go out by the motorcycle of your dreams, eat right, take care of yourself. And remember, if you're not having fun, you are doing it wrong. Now you go seize the day and I'll see you on the road, maybe even the dirt road, real, real soon. But I got a couple of hours to burn. I might as well just kill another tank of gas. This is number two. I might as well hit three tanks today. Why not? It's a three tank minimum. <laughs>